Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday morning, January 18th. A lot to talk about this morning. We have an active weather pattern across much of the nation. One last storm will hit California uh, later today and tonight, and then they'll have welcome relief in the Golden State and Washington and Oregon as well for at least the next week and a half, two weeks or so, right through the remainder of the month of January. All of that as a result of a building high pressure ridge in the upper part of the atmosphere over the eastern Pacific Ocean that will ultimately extend northward into Alaska. At the same time that develops, upper level trough will develop over the central part of the U.S. and Canada and it will certainly become a colder and colder weather pattern for the central and eastern U.S. as we go through the remainder of January. Just wanted to start off here by showing a snow map for the next 72 hours beginning last night, around midnight last night, out to uh, the January 21st time frame. And certainly significant snow accumulation from the uh, Rocky Mountain states all the way across the central plains and into the upper part of the Midwest. Denver may get near a foot of snow in this particular ongoing storm right now and then it tracks to the north and east and produces accumulating snow all the way into Wisconsin and Michigan. Meanwhile, this one last storm will produce some more snow over the Sierra Nevada mountains. And by the way, while I do believe there's a, a, an ex, a, certainly an extended period of drier and warmer weather for California beginning on really on Thursday after this last storm passes through later on today and tonight, it looks like that drier, warmer period will go to the end of the month of January, but it does not guarantee by any means that February will not see a return of storminess in California. So yes, there is certainly welcome relief coming to California for an extended period of time, but let, let's not get too carried away with that. It looks like uh, things may change again, become stormier again during the month of February. Also, some snow over the next 72 hours or so up across the northern part of New England. Well, before we take a look at some of the computer forecast models, I also wanted to show a map of temperatures across Siberia. This is certainly an area we track this time of the year. There's a tremendous cold air mass sitting over Siberia. A place called Tangulak has reached uh, minus 62 Celsius. That's about minus 80 on the Fahrenheit scale. One of the coldest temperatures ever recorded in that part of Siberia. And this whole area here has been very, very cold. This lighter shade here represents minus 40 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, whatever scale you're on here. So a widespread area of uh, extreme cold over Siberia the last several days. And we'll see if ultimately some of that cold air can make its way across the North Pole into the North America side of uh, the Northern Hemisphere. Well, I thought I would walk through the ensemble runs of three different models here going forward through the remainder of January. Here looking at the 850 millibar temperature anomalies. No question, it becomes a colder and colder weather pattern for the central and eastern U.S. We're looking here at the Zero Z ensemble runs. First a Canadian, then we'll take a look at the GFS and then the European model. And starting off here, as we begin the day here on Wednesday, notice this very, very expanded area of above normal temperatures at the 850 millibar level. We'll see in a week, week and a half or so, this changes uh, quite dramatically indeed. So let's move forward here with the 850 millibar temperature anomalies, again using the ensemble run of the Canadian model into the latter part of this work week, a little bit of colder the normal blob of air here over the uh, Midwest on Friday. Uh, quite a, an area of colder than normal conditions. Following this last in a series of storms that hits California late today and tonight, there'll be a cold influx of air uh, below normal conditions throughout much, not only of California, but in much of the uh, western part of the U.S. Now, let's move forward. Remember, we started off here on Wednesday with very, very warm conditions throughout much of Canada and the central and eastern U.S. Now we go through the upcoming weekend and into the early part of next week. We're now all the way out to next Tuesday, January 24th. Watch this area of below normal conditions as it starts to expand into the east. And here we are now 
a week from tomorrow and finally into Friday, the end of next week. This is the again the Canadian ensemble run from last night and I will say this is one of the colder model solutions out there but this is very very impressive cold when it's as widespread as indicated again we're talking a week and a half away nothing is set in stone this is for next Friday and uh, extending all the way from the interior western US to the northeast coastline all the way really to the southeast coastline below normal conditions on this particular Canadian model run. Well, let's now take a look at the GFS ensemble run from Zero Z last night. Again, the same starting point with very mild conditions relative to normal across Canada and the eastern half of the nation, colder out in the western part of the U.S. And watch how this flips as well by the middle latter part of next week. We're moving forward rather quickly here. And, and again, a cold air influx uh, follows this last in a series of storms for California uh, for the end of this work week going into the upcoming weekend. Here we are now into next Tuesday, January 24th, colder than normal out in the western half of the nation, still hanging on to above normal conditions, the eastern third, but this cold air influx then expands all the way into the east, and this model, just like the Canadian model for the end of next week, Friday, January 27th, the low normal temperatures extending really virtually from coast to coast is a very impressive look. And by the way, the latter part of January is climatologically speaking when temperatures reach their lowest for the most part across much of the nation. From a statistical point of view, the lowest readings are the latter part of January. So when you see below normal conditions at the end of January. That's pretty impressive indeed. Uh, again, because climatologically speaking, it's the coldest time of the year throughout much of the nation, whereas the warmest time of the year is the latter part of July. Well, let's wrap up with the ensemble run of the European model from Zero Z last night. Again, the same starting point, very mild conditions relative to normal throughout Canada, the eastern part of the nation. Let's quickly walk through this and then we'll take a look at some surface maps and again the same sort of pattern here where the cold air influx really starts to get widespread out across the western part of the nation by the early part of next week this is the forecast map for next tuesday still above normal hanging on over the eastern seaboard here but then that colder air out west expands all the way into the east and we'll end at the same point next friday January 27th, again, virtually coast-to-coast -coast type colder than normal conditions here, certainly in the eastern half of the nation and even across the interior west, colder than normal by the end of next week. So all three different computer forecast models, a Canadian, a GFS, European model, all favor a colder than normal solution, a widespread colder than normal solution across the nation by the latter stages of next week. Well, let's wrap up by looking at the Canadian model run from last night, the operational version of the Canadian model uh, from Zero Z last night. And I kind of want to focus in on the Mid-Atlantic's I-95 car region, places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, of course, pretty much been virtually non-existent non -existent snowfall this winter season. Maybe a coating here or there, especially in the suburbs with that late December Arctic air outbreak, for example, the suburbs of Philadelphia certainly got a coating or maybe even half an inch of snow. But for the most part, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, those urban areas have been without snow so far this winter season. Definitely a chance next week, and we'll kind of focus in on that potential over the next couple of minutes here. First of all, this is Wednesday morning. We have this snowstorm going on right now from uh, eastern Colorado across the central plains and that will extend into uh, the upper part of the Midwest over the next 12 to 24 hours or so again with decent snowfall uh, up to a foot or, or so around Denver but 6 to 10 inches maybe across the central plains and the upper part of the Midwest <clears throat> meanwhile excuse me a frontal system slides into the eastern US on Thursday looks like basically a rain event DC Philadelphia New York City and the snow uh, confined to the northwestern Great Lakes region. Then we'll get into the latter part of the week. Some cold air follows this 
Thursday storm system into the Mid-Atlantic region. Certainly can see a flow of air here out of the northwest by the time we get to midday on Friday. And this particular dash blue line here is kind of an important line to, to focus in on. This is what we call the 540 thickness line. It tends to be a pretty close estimate of the rain-snow line uh, this time of the year. And it's, it's something uh, meteorologists like to focus in on here. And it gives an indication the lower the thickness value, generally the lower the temperature. So the trend in these thickness lines gives us an idea of the trend in the temperature pattern here. So again, this is now Friday. And then let's move forward. We looks, it looks like we talked yesterday about an active weather pattern continuing for the central and eastern U.S. Basically, as that upper level trough builds over the central part of the U.S., high pressure ridging aloft will intensify over the southwestern Atlantic and the area in between the cold low to the uh, uh, northwest, the warm ridge to the south and east will be an active zone, kind of a conduit for low pressure areas to move southwest to northeast from the Gulf of Mexico all the way into the northeast U.S. The first uh, in this series will come at the end of the weekend into the early part of next week, and it looks like primarily a rain event, if not completely a rain event for the immediate I-95 Carter region. It's a close call. Something we'll have to monitor over the next few days will probably rain for D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, maybe a brief period at the onset, but it's just kind of hugging the coast a little bit too much for the immediate I-95 Carter region Sunday into Monday. Close call, something that could change. It doesn't take much of a change to uh, change the outlook here, but upstate Pennsylvania, New York, interior New England certainly can result in, uh, can become a significant snowstorm for those areas, the higher elevations of upstate Pennsylvania, New York, and interior New England. Now, on its heels, it'll pull in again some cold air in this fashion here by the time we get to the early part of next week, and it very well could be setting the stage for a better chance of snow next midweek. Now, let's move forward here. Watch what the Canadian model does. Again, here's that 540 line. Uh, cutting across, let's say, Philadelphia and the southern half of New Jersey, kind of an important uh, factor to watch here. But then we have this next system, a little bit better, perhaps, a little bit better chance for snow into the immediate I-95 Carter region. We're looking at the middle part of next week. Certainly not a perfect setup by any means for D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City with respect to snowfall, but perhaps a little bit better of a chance than the Sunday-Monday system uh, on the heels of that system, we'll see eventually a, a system right here developing near the Middle Atlantic coastline. This initial wave is allowed to transfer energy to another developing system here over uh, the uh, East Coast or maybe the western part of the Atlantic Ocean. So next midweek is something we'll certainly uh, monitor over the next several days. But again, an active weather pattern for the central and eastern U.S. And then go out a little bit farther in time. And this particular model run, this is next Friday, and we were talking about how all the ensemble runs have it, a quite a widespread cold of the normal pattern by the end of next week, let's say next Friday, January 27th, virtually from cold to, uh, from coast to coast, cold of the normal conditions. And take a look at this operational run of the Canadian model here, thickness here, 486 thickness right here. That is very, very cold air, uh, uh, very likely below zero type air in the upper part of the Midwest. Again, this is from the Canadian model. Remember that 540 line? It drops all the way south into the uh, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, Alabama, Mississippi area by the latter part of next week. This is very, very cold air, likely below zero type air over the upper part of the Midwest by the end of next week. Again, that's just the Canadian model, which tends to be the coldest of the three I looked at, but still widespread agreement amongst the computer forecast models uh, by the latter part of next week, colder than normal conditions across much of the nation. And that certainly uh, agrees with the upper level ridge forming Eastern Pacific all the way up to Alaska. That Again, we've talked about this over the past several videos. That allows the transport of very cold air from northern Canada into 
the central and eastern U.S. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.